Hello students. So we were studying chapter 6 that is new questions and ideas. So let's continue the chapter. So now we have Upanishads. Some of you must have heard about Upanishads. So around the time when the Buddha was teaching people about the importance of life or how should they live their lives. Some of the many great thinkers, they were trying to find the answers of many difficult questions. Like some of them wanted to know about the life after death. Some of them wanted to know why sacrifices should be performed. And many of these thinkers, they all felt that there is something permanent in the universe. And like that would last even after the death. So there is something permanent which never dies and it lasts ever long so they described that as the atma or you say the individual soul and the brahman or the universal soul so the atma and the brahman they are the one thing also and like atma we say now like if somebody dies so the body is dead but the atma or you the, or you say the soul inside that body it never dies it go to the universe so this was the atma which we talk about and so all the ideas of these great thinkers they all are recorded in upanishads so that's why they are called upanishads and the these are the later Vedic texts like we have we have studied about four Vedas. So these Upanishads are written after those four Vedas. So Upanishads, it actually means approaching and sitting near. So the meaning of Upanishad is approaching and sitting near. So it's a basically Upanishad is a conversation between a teacher and a student and in most of the Upanishads, there are only conversations from which we can learn and like ideas of people, great people, they are uh, presented in the form of dialogues. So you like you know, the conversation of two people, so they are presented in a simple dialogues. So like most Upanishadic like whosoever the most Upanishadic thinkers was they were mostly men and in the men they were Brahmins and Rajas uh, like uh, there are women they were women thinkers also like some of the women thinkers such as Gargi so she was very famous for her learning and she, uh, she also participated in the debates of the royal courts like uh, kings used to uh, organize the debates for the people so she, um, Gargi used to participate in that and like who poor people or you say the Shudra they never took or you say they rarely took part in these discussions and one of the famous exception or you say one of the uh, famous ex exception was Satya Kama Jabala so Satyakama Jabala, he was known, named after his mother and his mother was a slave, slave woman whose name was Jabali and that Satyakama Jabala has a very great desire to learn about the reality and he is fortunately accepted by the Brahmin teacher and he named uh, and the name of that Brahmin teacher was Gautama. So he accepted Satya Kama Jabala as his student and he teached him various lessons as he was very interested in learning. And he was known as the best known thinkers of that time. Like Satya Kama Jabala, he studied a lot and he learned a lot about Vedas and all the important things which people used to learn in that time. So he was known as the best known thinker. So like many of the ideas of Upanishads were developed and like developed later after these uh, king's time also it was developed later and some of the great ideas were developed by a famous thinker Shankaracharya. So now here is a dialogue uh, based on a famous story 
or you say one of the most famous Upanishads, the Chandogya Upanishad. And in this, uh, the beggar is asking food from the two sages, Shonaka and Abhipratarin. So let's say, uh, let's see the conversation between them. So Sonaka said, we cannot spare anything for you. He said, we cannot give anything to you. We have to eat ourselves. Then beggar replied, learned sirs, whom do you worship? And Abhipratarin said, the universal soul. Beggar replied, ah, it means that you know that the universal soul fills the entire world. Sages replied, they nodded their head. Yes, yes, we know that. Beggar said, if the universal soul fills the whole world, it fills me too. Who am I but a part of the world? Then sages replied, you speak the truth, O young Brahmin. Beggar said, then O sages, by not giving me food, you are actually denying food to the universal soul. Then the sages realized the truth of what the beggar said and they shared their food with him. So this was a wise beggar and you see how wisely and how beautifully he make, made the sages to realize the truth. So next we have Jainism. So like the story of Buddha which we have studied in the previous video this is the story of the jana or you say the vardhamana mahavira who were the 24th who was the 24th tirthankara of the janas and his name was vardhamana mahavira so like buddha he also spread his mess he also spread his messages around 2500 years ago and he was a chhatriya prince of the lichavis group and and Lichavis group was a part of the Vajji Sangha. Uh, about Vajji Sangha we have read in chapter 5. So at the age of 30 he left his home and went to the forest to live. And for 12 years he had a very hard and very lonely life. But after 12 years he attained enlightenment. And after that he started teaching people about the truth of life. So he, he was having a simple rule like the men and women who want to know the truth of life they have to follow a very strict rule and the rule of ahimsa or you say the non-violence so he used to say that hurting or killing anybody is a very bad thing and because life is dear to everyone like every planet or you say Every living organism on this earth, life is dear to everyone. They all love their life. Nobody wants to die. So the followers of Mahavira have to follow the path of non-violence. And he used to spread his messages in the Prakritic language, Prakritic language of that place. Prakritic language like in Magadha. Magadhi used to, uh, like people used to speak Magadhi. So Magadhi was a Prakritic language of Magadha. And the follower of Mahavira or the follower of Mahavira were known as Janas and they have to live a very simple life like they have to beg for the food and they have to be very honest like absolutely honest. They cannot think about lying and they cannot think about even stealing also. So they have to be very honest and like men have to give up everything including their clothes like no men can wear clothes even pertaining the enlightenment so it was very difficult for most men and women to follow these strict rules but thousands of men and women they have lived their like left their homes to follow the path of vardhamana mahavira and like for most of the followers of jainism was the traders and farmers but it was very difficult for the farmers like they used to kill the insects who used to destroy their crops but from after following the Jainism they don't have to kill those insects so it was very difficult to follow those rules but they followed and like over a hundred of years ago Jainism, Jainism spread around the north indian part of india 
Gujarat, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. These are the places where Jainism spreaded and the teachings of the Mahavira, they are all uh, written down in a book or you say they are all uh, written down in some of the forms and they are preserved in the Vallabhi in Gujarat around 1500 years ago. So he was also a great inspiration or you say a great uh, thinker of that time and now he is worshipped as a god like Buddha. So that was all about Jainism and that's all for this video also. I hope you have understood the topics. Uh, in the next video, we'll finish this chapter. So thank you so much.